Hello everyone, Russ of Aquarimax Pets here. Not long ago, I made a video detailing what you can do when you have one isopod bin infiltrated by another strain of the same species of that isopod and you don't want the two strains mixing. Now, sometimes it's perfectly appropriate to mix them. That is how you can create, for example, Porcelionides perinosis party mix, one of my uh, favorites. Or Porcelionides perinosis orange cream was created by very intentionally putting Oreo crumbles together with powder orange. And I talk more about how that happens in other videos. I, in fact, created my own strain of the same morph with different stock, uh, resulting in these freckled gingers. But there are times when you don't want to mix them, of course, because, for example, Porcelionides prenosis whiteout is a morph that is uh, based on a single gene recessive trait, meaning if you mix them with wild types, wild type is dominant, and pretty soon you could lose the, uh, the whiteout trait completely, or at least you would have to work hard over several generations to restore it. So, in the previous video, and I'll put a link to that, you see how I separated them basically by removing very young, small individuals that hopefully weren't old enough to mate yet. Uh, by doing so, I could ensure that they only mate with each other. The difficulty with that is that many isopods will successfully mate and even give birth when they are quite a bit smaller than the adult size. And Porcelionides prenosis is not a very big isopod. So I had to separate out some very small specimens in order to ensure that they hadn't mated. So now I'm going to reveal the results to demonstrate whether or not I was able to get individuals that had not mated with wild types and indeed been able to preserve uh, my whiteout uh, colony. The other ones I ended up creating a nice big party mix with lots of different other uh, forms and that's so I didn't have to um, dispose of the other isopods. I just now have a very large party mix colony. That's what I did with the other bin where the whiteouts were. So let's take a look here. Fortunately, it looks like all of these are still whiteouts. You can see some darkness, but that is not a result of pigment in the isopod per se, but you can see into the isopod. And that is quite normal. But fortunately, it doesn't look like there are any dark specimens there. Let's look here under here. Now, if there were any that had mated with uh, the wild types, then I would fully expect to see at least some wild type babies in here because, as I said, the wild type is dominant over this uh, whiteout gene. And so we would definitely see some dark specimens here in here, but it looks like there are none. So I have successfully managed to salvage the, the whiteout strain uh, from the stock that I had instead of having to uh, purchase stocks and starting out from the beginning. Because I started out with a small number, I think it was about 20 very small individuals. Um, it took a little while, but you can see they're reproducing pretty well. This is a very prolific species. Uh, they grow quickly. And so even though it hasn't been very long and I started out all with immature individuals, they're now, all those immature individuals have matured and have produced multiple uh, clutches of babies. So a success. Short video today. Thanks for watching. I post videos every Friday with live streams on Wednesdays, all on aquarium and vivarium pets. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then tap the bell for all notifications so you don't miss my next video.